How do all of you delicious people? I'm here today to review the second half of the second season of United States of Terra. So when going through this immediately, I'm like, man, have they just really just made Terra's character and the altars of which she has? Man, have they just been really minimizing her? They haven't been like making her a character that is uh, a easier character to deal with, but ultimately they've just kind of minimized a lot of the stuff that she's done uh, to the point to where ultimately she is not really the face of this show, really, when we're actually watching it. It's just like, she's there, but nah. Like, who cares whatever is going on with her? Let me see what's going on with Kate. Let me see what's going on with, um, let's see what's going on with Max. And let's see what's going on with Charmaine. Because ultimately, who really cares what's going on with Marshall, to be really honest? Because ultimately, when looking at Marshall's story, I'm like, man, I'm just, like... It seems like his story is going in to no direction. Like, there is really no, like, it just seems like they're just kind of like, okay, well, this is like the uh, the story where we know that it's going to have a beginning, a middle, and the end. And then uh, let's, let's start him on another thing. And then it, that'll have a, a, sh a, a small shelf life. Uh, it just feels like Marshall's stories just have a ton of just, a small short life of of what they are because ultimately they just need somebody to ultimately just kind of um like not having one full-fledged uh like journey of such uh honestly sadly enough the only interesting that's really thing that is really going on with this show is what kate is doing for these episodes and when looking at it i'm like I never thought that I would be so interested in, in Brie Larson's character, but I guess I am, because there's, like, she's the most unique and or different character in in this second half. But who knows what's going to happen after that. Maybe they're going to bland her out, and then ultimately I'll just be like, nah, because ultimately she's been bland for the longest time. A lot of the stuff that ultimately she was doing, I'm like, gosh, she's the most, like, like, blah, 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 I'm so bored character watching her. Like, everyone else was, was so much more interesting than her. But then eventually, Bree's character is probably the most interesting character. And Marshall is the most uh, blandish, like, boringest character, sadly enough. And because ultimately Max, it seems that his story is getting a little bit more interesting uh, Charmaine's story is getting more interesting. Uh, it seems that Tara is just kind of just... Really, ultimately, I'd uh, spoken uh, with a girl named Jaden, and she had just kind of, like, gave me a whole kind of rundown of how she felt about the entire first season. And, like, I was like, holy cow. I'm like, there's so much information here. And I like how, like, she was, like, disproving, like, every little bit of what, like was going I I really enjoy that that was really fun to just hoping just read that because I read the whole thing and I was like oh my god like yeah that like this actually makes sense how like Buck ultimately we have to justify how Buck does not have a legitimate weighing going on into this uh into the show and like there was so much going on in there where I was just like I was kind of like this going on like this the whole entire time just going like agreeing with a lot of like yeah, this is kind of interesting, the, like, the approach of all of this. And then ultimately, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's probably parts in the show that I ultimately, especially when reviewing the whole entire season, uh, there's stuff that I probably missed. There's a lot of stuff that ultimately I just had to comp uh, compartmentalize and just ultimately just like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, that is, like, that was an interesting moment. Um I think it's interesting how like they keep kind of going back to things and stuff that doesn't actually make sense. They're going to just keep going back to it or ultimately they're just going to all of a sudden have uh, characters that are all of a sudden just not as coherent as they once were before. Like we have it to where 
like Tara's father is just like a mess bizarrely and I just don't quite understand how all of a sudden now he is just a mess of a father and I'm like okay that makes no sense like if you would have seen him through the number of the episodes that you that you saw him before like I just don't think that they really quite understood what to do with uh, with Tara and Charmaine's father that ultimately they just uh, they just did this and so now they have to show a father that is much more broken and and also has like a mystery to ultimately tie himself on to like well Tara has to solve yet another mystery like, so is that what Tara is going to do now? She's just a mystery solver. She's a, uh, like, uh, she just has to be a person that has to get, like, uh, what she has to, like, solve her entire past. And that's who she's going to be now. She's either Nancy Drew or she's going to be some comedian that has to tell some joke using her uh, disorder. Because um, that seems what... Uh, really Tara is now like I'm seeing that more and more every time that I'm seeing her she has to do like something that either is like a -dum -dum kind of approach or uh, a comedic like approach or she has to be cute and I'm like whatever happened to T whatever happened to uh like, it kind of seemed like any character that seemed seductive or whatever in the first season, now they, like, took that all out for Tara, and now Kate has to be a more seductive woman, and we have it to where... And that is, like, the worst thing to do. Like, oh yeah, let's have Kate be the more seductive girl in the show. Why? Uh, we end up having it to where she's doing that, I guess. So she's that side of the show, which is bizarre. And then ultimately we have Tara just being the uh, kooky person that has to jump in every once in a while and boom, tsh, be the comedian bizarrely by throwing in some uh, disorder joke or otherwise has to do something funny or like yeah like i can really see that now that like tara is bringing in the jokes with her disorder which i think is horrible it seems wrong um like but especially i could see that now where i couldn't see that before um like but especially through this wrong now that now she's just kind of uh she does less she's involved in things less uh if anything like I don't think that I've ever really actually seen Tara, like, like, there's sometimes here and there where ultimately she'll talk to her kids, but, like, I don't really actually see her really and truly being a mother whatsoever. Like, <laughs> like, I don't feel that Tara is a mother on this show. Like, she's just a person that has to live with these other people. But, like, I don't feel that like, Tara is an actual mother to her kids. Like, I could, like, I could say that maybe Max feels more like a dad uh, to his kids. Uh, but ultimately, it seems like Max is just on his own planet somewhere, just doing his own thing. And then he eventually has to come back and just like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm uh, I'm I guess I'm with this family. <laughs> hey, here's what I did through my journeys of, of being off and doing my own thing. Um, because, man, are they just separating everybody and having them do their own adventures like Kate is ultimately like the only reason why she's still tied to this family is because she still lives at home. Marshall ultimately is uh I don't think was ever really tied to this family, but ultimately would talk to them and ultimately uh, would be a person that like just has to just deal with living there. But anyways, so Charmaine kind of has much more like, I think they're really trying to go out of the way to tie Charmaine much more into this show than they ever were. 
Um, I thought that Charmaine would just, they would just kind of uh, marry her off or like do something with her and then just like you wouldn't see her anymore. But man, are they just like tying her even more into the show? Like everything has to be tied to Charmaine in some way. And I thought that that was like, why? <laughs> like it feels like Charmaine has had so much like screen time that I would have thought that like she would have taken a back seat for other characters. Uh, Pat Oswald uh, has uh, seemingly a a little bit more screen time. Neil in this in this show, and I was kind of happy about that. Uh, but then again, um, the stuff that he was involved in, I just wasn't that jazzed about. Because uh, ultimately, it just feels like they are desperately trying to figure out something for him to do because Max isn't doing construction anymore kind of thing. Um, so reasonably, uh, Nick, uh, Nick ultimately is... Reasonably, I think, a character that I was just like, what was the point of this character? What was the point of this character? What was the point of him? I'm confused. Reasonably, you could have just easily just... You could have had a blowout moment, and then reasonably, like, Charmaine could have gone and done any number of things. Well, let's just say that in a cryptic like sense uh but anyways so uh it seems that sadly enough there isn't much to talk about Terra in this second half or really in this second season just because what she does doesn't feel that it matters like the only the only real relevant thing that ultimately uh, comes up is like one whole thing in this half of this this other half of this season so that's kind of sad uh <laughs> but even after that that kind of like there is so much mis mystery about what ends up happening that is the big important thing with Terra, and like again it gets kind of fluffed off or it seems like they're just adding too many pieces to the Terra puzzle that ultimately I'm just otherwise just going like, God, this is just turning into a Nancy Drew mystery show. And like we had it to where Max was solving the Terra mystery, but now Terra has to solve the Terra mystery. And I'm like, God, why don't we just get the Scooby-Doo van together and just like, just start trying to solve these clues. Uh, I get it that reasonably... Maybe with this disorder, uh, reasonably, it's like, well, like, we have to figure out the patient zero of every single thing of why Tara got to get m multiple personalities. But when really looking at it, I don't think that unraveling this thing is going to uh, reasonably solve everything. Like, I don't think that like her finding out her patient zero kind of thing is going to get rid of these personalities and because more are just coming out so like when looking at it like in the early stages of this disorder like this thing could have been easily manageable and like okay we could resolve all these these disorders but it seems like the longer that we're going with this show the longer that we're going to have so many different alters and so many whatever that i'm like okay so reasonably especially in the second season it feels like we're delaying the treatment of tara and just having her uh, just kind of wilding out, if you know what I mean. Just kind of uh, doing whatever persona that she needs or alter to uh, kind of have her go wild. Like, I'm waiting for one of these alters to just do the worst possible thing and there be no way of going back from that. But they would never do that on, that sh on this show because when looking at it, like... 
uh, like that would never happen because that would probably end the show or reasonably or people wouldn't like the show after that kind of thing. Um, of them going like, no, they went into this horrible direction. So ultimately, a lot of it is just like realizing like how many times that Tara has cheated through these episodes. And I'm like, man, that's kind of degrading your main character by basically showing that like your main character is basically the equivalent of a of a floozy or whatever. And that's kind of sad. Um, like, I think a lot of the. I think a lot of this uh, show ultimately, like at some points like, is to make Tara look bad, uh, to make her, like, side characters having to wrangle her or take care of her to make them look good? That is the weirdest thing to do in this show. Uh, because ultimately, again, the, the name of the show is Tara. You're supposed to... <laughs> You're supposed to make Tara look like, yeah, she's hard to deal with, but at the end of the day, the things that she ends up doing are ultimately, like, if she switches into a persona, it's probably uh, going to po quite possibly be a benefit to the family at some point. Because um, when looking at it, I feel like what they were doing in the early seasons was to benefit the family at some points with different kind of altars where we had it to where like Alice ultimately uh, making food for the family. But on top of that, like uh, she was the person like shunning uh, the teacher uh, that was ultimately kind of uh, singling out Marshall and this and that. And ultimately that worked out. Uh, we had it to where uh, T was really being, uh, like a supportive person for, for Kate, uh, during a time where ultimately, like, I think Kate really needed it. And now that we don't have this T person here, like Kate is just going off on her own and she's just finding whatever people and she's just doing all kinds of things. And she's just being a, basically the equivalent of a cam girl. Uh, through most of this to be brutally honest so yeah let's go into spoilers about this uh because ultimately like i'm gonna break this down and uh try to break it down as quickly as humanly possible just because i think there's like a lot there's there's just a lot of just side stories of all these characters to get into so Ultimately, uh, reasonably, one thing I have to backpedal on, uh, ultimately on the last episode, uh, it was very much that uh, I found out that, or I realized it's like, oh, they, they confirmed that it was like a tornado that had rolled through the, uh, rolled through the home. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, was it a storm? Was it a tornado? Not sure. Anyways, so going through here, so... We ha and I'm kind of confused where exactly to start first. So, let's go into Max. Or, no, wait, let's go through, I think Kate will probably be easier. So, we have it seemingly where Kate ends up going and doing YouTube videos. Uh, she ends up doing YouTube videos with the whole, like, princess attire and whatever. And I was just like, okay, so where are they going to go with that? Uh, they end up going with her ending up uh, becoming a personality, I guess, uh, to where she wanted to become adult, but instead became a costume. So we have it to where Kate is to ultimately go into going and evidently being paid for just to talk to guys. But then eventually we end up finding out that Kate ends up doing activities for men, which I thought was, uh, I thought was interesting just because it was different. Uh, how rarely do we ever see a movie and or show that does that? Like, yeah, there's stuff like that out there. There's ultimately the movie Cam, uh, but ultimately that's not exactly a, 
things that go into bizarre activities that ultimately Brie goes into. Uh, so we have a tour. Brie ultimately is to bizarrely make a cake and then bizarrely sit on it for some guy. Uh, we ultimately have it to where Bree is ultimately going, or Kate is ultimately going and sitting on balloons for some guy. Uh, to where they pop, of course. Uh, we end up having it to where Bree consistently does these activities to have these guys ultimately uh, beef jerk it, if that's ultimately what they do. So... We have it to where Kate, I guess, is the more, like, seductive character because she's kind of wearing uh, just, like, corset and bra and and kind of, like, doing all these kind of activities that I guess could be concerned or concerned, considered um, seductive, I guess. Weirdly bizarre. Anyways, so... We have, well, like, whatever your, whatever fits your fiddle, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you found that seductive, then okay, all right. So, we end up having it to where Kate ends up finding some uh, sugar daddy, I guess, from usual terms of, of internet people that end up getting the ability to find a guy that is otherwise rich. I kind of seen like documentaries about women that ends up doing uh, these like kind of uh, lady of the night activities. And then eventually they end up finding a guy that is rich uh, that ultimately they call them their sugar daddy and pays for them with all kinds of things. So like I've kind of seen this in a much more like uh, adult like way rather than what Kate is doing. And so ultimately I'm like, oh, OK, so she found her sugar daddy and basically, uh, this guy is telling her, like, oh, yeah, we can afford all these lavish uh, penthouse suites and all these kinds of things. I think, in all brutal honesty, that this guy isn't what he seems. Like, I have a feeling that this guy is all smoke and mirrors. And when uh, Kate is really going to find out is that... Uh, this guy may seem like he's a rich guy or may seem like he's whatever, but then reasonably we're going to eventually find that this guy is a thief or uh, something like that. And again, it'll be all smoke and mirrors. And this guy wasn't a rich guy. He just made it look like he was, is what I would naturally assume that eventually this guy is going to head into being. Because why would life all of a sudden work out for Kate so well? Or I'm assuming that this is going to end up being some bizarre Fifty Shades of Grey situation at some weird point, at some weird turn. So, uh, so ultimately that's kind of like the whole story arc, really, of just Kate through these episodes. So, uh, let's go into Marshall. So, we have a tour. Marshall is, of course... Uh, Re coming out, and ultimately we have it to where he is to have his girlfriend give him a liar box, which ultimately the liar box makes no sense. I think that she just really wanted to vent that ultimately, like, she's kind of upset that their relationship didn't work out, but it was never really, I don't think, meant to really work out. I think it was just, like, yeah, it was a good thing that ultimately Marshall did this, but when looking at it, like, I guess he was, like, confirming uh, that he was ultimately being gay and this and that. So, we end up having it to where uh, we have uh, Marshall's, girlf or Marshall's girlfriend delivering him a box, a liar box, of basically stuff that doesn't exactly make any sense for him being a liar. But reasonably, like, she just kept all that stuff of him and I think that she just really wanted to throw that back in his face and I thought that that was kind of just a silly uh thing to do uh just to kind of like I think they just kind of have to do that when a relationship doesn't work out they have to have like moments that ultimately give this relationship a much more backstory but really we just have this liar box ending up turning into some kind of artistic piece that ultimately uh Tara ends up doing and going with so, uh, so reasonably we have it to where Marshall 
goes and ends up going uh, with the blonde-haired guy that ultimately he had first uh, gone into lunch with, which ultimately I don't know the guy's actual name. Uh, anyways, um, I'm trying to think what it is. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's not coming. Anyways, so... <laughs> His boyfriend, Marshall's boyfriend, because ultimately we cement this relationship. Really, we have it to where this, uh, to where this blonde, ambitioned guy is otherwise kind of pushing Marshall into some, into some dark paths, some dark situations. Ultimately, we have it to where uh, I think that this uh, boyfriend of Marshall's is going to have like a lot of. Uh, problems, and I think, like, because reasonably it seems like this guy is very shady anyways. Like, ultimately how he had gone into a park with seemingly an older man uh, to ultimately unzip uh, their pants uh, to ultimately get a little bit of uh, BJ action going on. We ultimately have it to where Marshall is kind of innocent and in all this, and we have it to where reasonably uh, that is to retie us uh, with Ted's character. Ted ultimately is to go into here and kind of, I guess, usher bizarrely Marshall in uh, to... Because it seems like Ted and Marshall are bizarrely, like, consistently tying themselves together through this story. Uh, because we eventually have it to where Marshall and his boyfriend ultimately get uh, Ted's uh, husband into drugs. And that ultimately uh, breaks up uh, Ted with his boyfriend. And so ultimately we have it to where Ted ultimately is angry at Marshall. And so ultimately that leads us into just tying Ted and, and Marshall together consistently for ultimately, Ted ends up noticing uh, Marshall at this park because ultimately Ted is going to be doing some park activities with some kind of guy, let's just say. And Ted ends up kind of walking out of the woods to ultimately say, Oh, hey, Ted, yeah, my, my son, I'm ultimately going to walk him out of here. And so we end up having Ted kind of uh, realizing how innocent Marshall is. And so he's going to try to save him from this moment and ultimately have it to where... Um, Ted and Marshall had confirmed to one another that's like, hey, we're gonna keep this between us because, like, we like both have dirt and on one another. Told me say that you had went here, and so <laughs> we're never gonna mention this again. So, reasonably, we have it to where Marshall and his boyfriend end up uh, confirming with a kiss, because uh, ultimately we have it to where Marshall and his boyfriend end up. Uh, it's like his boyfriend ends up mentioning like all the stuff that uh, the older man and him done and did, and but then eventually lends up lends or ends up having Marshall ends up kissing this boyfriend and ultimately cementing this relationship. And I'm like, like I just feel that this relationship is just gonna go horribly awry, and I think that eventually Marshall is just gonna end up finding someone else or. I just think that Marshall is just going to consistently end up just, like, his stories are just going to be short-lived consistently. Uh, I just don't think that they know where to go with him, and I think that's really just going to consistently keep happening. They don't know what to do with him. And so they're ultimately just going to end up having everything just a short-lived thing, and that's what's going to happen. Honestly. So, moving on. So... We ultimately have Charmaine, who ultimately is uh, seemingly having a lot of things going on in here. We ultimately have it to be revealed the secret that ultimately Neil is ultimately Charmaine's baby daddy. And so ultimately we have it to where uh, Charmaine ultimately is with Nick and Nick knows that Nick is not the father of this child. So we end up having it to where... Charmaine is ultimately just in desperation to have Nick keep this baby, knowing full well it's not his. 
And also, uh, Neil ultimately has to basically just sign away his parental rights, even though reasonably he wants to be a part of the baby's life. That doesn't matter. And because ultimately, Charmaine just wants to be with Nick, and Nick is ultimately fine with having a baby, what we are led to believe. And so, ultimately, we assume that everything is going to go perfectly fine with but within time, when really looking at it, uh, we have it to where Nick ultimately by the time of wedding day, we have it to where Nick is all of a sudden just like, you could see he's like sweating and you could just tell like he's, he's just like, uh, like he's having cold feet. You could kind of tell when eventually, uh, Tara is chicken and we'll ultimately get to that, uh, that you can just tell that that Nick is just looking at Charmaine as just like, like, God, I just want to pull the ripcord on this whole family. <laughs> like, I guess it took Nick really in being involved with this entire family and just to see how, uh, cause I think really like, I think Nick could really sense that, like, Charmaine was, like, clinging on to Nick out of real and true desperation. Like, it wasn't the fact that she... that she really did uh, love him. It was just the fact that it's like, well, I love the uh, idea of him rather than so the actual guy him guy himself. I think really if you would have like if like to see between these two characters really and closely, I don't feel that we could ever cement that they were good for one another, to be brutally honest. But anyways, so we eventually have it to where uh, Nick and Charmaine ultimately end up uh, go to the wedding and basically just like, nope, like Nick ends up uh, as the ceremony is going on. We end up having Nick just going like, yeah, you know what? Like, I am just done with this whole family thing. If anything, the baby isn't even mine. So ultimately, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm, I'm Blitzville. We end up having it to where Nick ends up seeing Tara end up having to be an altar. And I think immediately he's just like, dude, I am peacing out. I think all these people are loons. I'm going to get out of here. So we have it to where eventually that... Neil ultimately is kind of Charmaine's rebound, and I think reasonably, that is the worst thing. We have it to where, like, reasonably Neil is ultimately going to sign away his parental, uh, his parental rights, and then he's going off to, like, some uh, oil mining rig somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and... But then eventually uh, we find out that uh, that Charmaine's wedding had went sideways. And so Neil is right then and there ultimately going and trying to pick up the pieces right off of the wedding. And ultimately just cement him and uh, Charmaine are going to be a couple. Okay. Uh, but when looking at it, like, like Charmaine should be doing everything humanly possible to win Neil over because... She was not her first choice. And that's got to be the most heartbreaking thing that I think Neil should eventually deal with, but I don't think he ever will. I guess it should just be like, well, like, look at that hot woman, and I should just be fine with looking at that hot woman and having uh, my baby and, and, and having my cake and eating it too and whatever. So I don't know, like, I guess, like, Neil is just happy that ultimately the woman that he ultimately slept with is ultimately going to be the woman that he's going to be with. And I guess just content about all that. So let's go on with Max. So reasonably Max is ultimately just kind of really trying to sell that house that ultimately uh, had that guy who had died in it. Uh, trying to really seal the deal on that home. It seems like everybody is trying to, like, talk about buying this house. It seems that even Kate's boyfriend was ultimately mentioning at some point 
about buying that house. And so reasonably, we have it to where, like, Max is like, yeah, any time now. Uh, ultimately, that was supposed to be left for, uh, for Nick and Charmaine, but who knows what the heck is happening. So... We end up having it to where Max is ultimately really having to deal with a lot of Terra stuff. Because uh, ultimately, let's go into it. Because, like, Max has, uh, has, has a lot of, like, even kind of uh, faithful issues with Terra. And, but then ultimately those issues are just to make Tara look bad and so on and so forth. So, man, do we end up just have, uh, I think, uh, Pammy, uh, just end up just being like a, uh, like the girl from Chasing Amy. Like, man, does she just turn into just a, like a hoe for show, if you know what I mean. And that just seems awful that ultimately she's just like, yeah, like whoever just wants to just get with me just like i know it's gonna be one and done thing but i just feel that it's awful so going in here so we have it to where max ultimately is to uh be frustrated that tara is going off and spending so much time with kate's uh hippy dippy woman uh that ultimately was uh, Linda B. Frazier. We ultimately have it to where uh, Tara is trying to express herself through art. And so while Tara is consistently going off and doing that, I think that is uh, driving Matt kind of uh, into being more and more upset because it feels that Tara isn't really being there for Max, and ultimately it's just kind of starting to drive a wedge between Max and Tara's relationship. Uh, it seems that ultimately we eventually have it to where Max is basically just forced into the arms of another woman just because Tara is just not there for him or ultimately every single time like there is just an altar there for him and ultimately like he just can't consistently keep dealing with that and ultimately whatever altar that he has to deal with is just the most difficult and just like there's a lot of times where i just want to like i just want to see max just going and just like shut up whoever <laughs> Like, I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm just going to lock you up in a room until you just figure whatever whatever is going on. And, like, just you're going to stay in a room until you become Terra again. Because I think that's ultimately just, like, what should just happen at some points. So we end up having it to where Max is forced into the arms of another woman, which is Pammy. And we have it to where ultimately... That leads Max to confess to uh, the altar therapist, which uh, I want to say it's uh, Shira or Sh Shira, Shira. I'm 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 never gonna get that name right. Um, so we have it to where ultimately max goes and confesses to uh the therapist and we end up having it to where tara is not going to be there for max emotionally and because ultimately we have it to where tara is kind of talking to the therapist and we find out that tara is not going to be the thing that ultimately max needs right now which ultimately is just uh, evidently passionate lovemaking. And so we have it to where the therapist is ultimately going to be the seductress and ultimately give uh, seemingly uh, Max a BJ. And then ultimately we're going to have it to where uh, 
in vice versa, uh, Max is ultimately going to go downtown on the therapist, but ultimately they're not going to show that moment because heaven forbid they actually show a pleasing of a of a woman on a show because heaven forbid uh <laughs> i'm annoyed by that and i should be uh but anyways so because i don't know how many times we have to like showcase like some uh like some guy getting a b uh j but when looking at it like heaven forbid we show a bunch of reverse scenes in in that kind of I don't know why uh, I have to complain about that, but moving on. So, like, most of the time we can show a girl getting a uh, a toy of sorts and then using that. But heaven forbid we do anything else other than that, which is freaking annoying. So, going into here, it is. It's, it's just a thing. Moving on. I can't let it go. Anyways, moving on. So, we end up having a tour. Max ends up. Uh, talking to the therapist, but then he eventually confesses to Tara that ultimately he had slept with uh, Pammy. And we have it to where Tara is ultimately, like, you could just see, like, her face just broken about this news. And then ultimately she's like, what is happening to us? Like, kind of like, where are we going in this relationship? And it just seems that ultimately... Uh, Tara's are all, Tara's alters are just kind of, like, having a rift, um, a rift between everything. But eventually we have it to where Tara ends up forgiving, uh, Max, because really we have this moment where, uh, Tara is talking to Charmaine and, and confesses, like, well, and Charmaine kind of brings up the point, well, how many affairs have you had while being your alters and and we ultimately have it to where Tara had said probably like 30 some odd times I'm like good god I'm like man like you should have figured out something with Max you should have like talked things out and whatever like ultimately whatever your alters need but it's just the fact that it's like man you should have worked something out like something like having so many affairs to where you're just kind of blowing through things or blowing through people or whatever, literally or figuratively. Um, like that is the thing where it's just the fact of just, we have it to where Tara is an overly uh, seductive person and reasonably we have it to where we can ultimately just say that Max is just not good enough for her, or ultimately all these alters are ultimately because they can't please Max, they're going to go somewhere else. And ultimately I'm just like, well, shouldn't have all these alters just ended up sleeping with Max to avoid all of these affairs? Because 30 affairs, 30 some odd affairs. So we end up having it to where Tara is ultimately looking bad in the eyes of uh, of the viewer, which I think is the stupidest thing to do. Because it's like, oh, well, like Tara is much more underhanded than Max is. But uh, we have to just bottleneck all of that uh, and just say, well, we just have to say the word DID or disorder or whatever to ultimately just... Throw that stuff all under the rug and ultimately just say, well, yeah, but it's fine because disorder. I'm like, I'm sorry, but like, are you going to say the same thing for a drunk or a, or a druggie or whatever that ultimately like ends up uh, one night uh, going and running somebody over? And ultimately, it's just like, well, yeah, but he was an alcoholic. So like, I guess that's fine. Like reasonably like having like repetitious affairs and ultimately just like slapping a label on it just saying like well it's the disorder yeah like if anything if mike and tara are to have an arrangement then uh then why isn't that all the altars don't have a a arrangement as well like i guess like 
it just seems like they haven't been dealing with this disorder their entire lives. It just feels like all of a sudden this stuff just starts creeping up now. It's like, hasn't been Buck... Hasn't Buck always been a part of this thing? Hasn't uh, T? Hasn't uh, so on and so forth people? Like, I, I can understand when Tara wasn't married or whatever, that ultimately any of all of her alters could have slept with anybody all through town or whatever. But now that she's married, shouldn't she have had one real true, like, oh, okay, well... Uh, any of my alters, call this guy <laughs> if you want to have some relationship things. And ultimately, this guy will be a paid thing for you to go and uh, and do that. Or uh, like something along those lines. Or ultimately, they could have just slept with Max and would have completely and utterly worked out with the exclusion of probably Buck. Or ultimately, she would act he would actually need a actual woman to be with because dot 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 anyways so moving on i've taken way too much time to talk about any of the, all of this so like i just feel that a lot of this order a lot of this disorder doesn't feel like something that has been a uh, an ever longing thing it just feels like all of a sudden this disorder just premiered on on united states of terra and they haven't de dealt with any number of any of these things, uh, it just feels like now they're just, like, it just feels like they just kind of have just, like, what have any of these therapists been doing? It just seems like none of any of this work, uh, like, it just feels like Tara had been wasting her time the entire, her entire life to not get to any of the bottom of anything. And, like, that is the biggest problem that I've had, that all of a sudden, like, there's all of a sudden these huge, gigantic secrets that Ultimate Terra, uh, like, doesn't know about, and evidently everybody was going to take to their grave, bizarrely. Sure. Uh, <laughs> okay, Oakley Doakley. Uh, I don't get it, but I guess it is what it is. So... We have it to where ultimately, uh, so like Max had an, uh, had his affair and ultimately it seems that Tara is ultimately going and seemingly after her artistic like adventure, uh, she ultimately, and I'm going to, I'm going to get to Tara's stuff. I th I guess I'm going to forcibly save her for last. After Tara's consistent uh, artistic adventure, we have it to where uh, Tara ends up going under a different name. She's going by her maiden name. And ultimately, she's just like, yeah, I think that's better. I think that's, like, I think that that's just looks like it fits better. And Max is just like, are you kidding me? Like, dude, I have to put in all this work to do with you. And you want to just not go under my name in a public adventure, which is displaying your art. Okay? <laughs> it's just, like, I guess you're going under a ghost name or whatever the heck. We ultimately have it to where Max is is adamant that ultimately Tara is going and having another altar under her maiden name and this artistic side to Tara is a altar. Trolled me Tara is ultimately telling Max is like, no, I think this this is me. Like I think I'm fine. Like I think like I'm just trying new things and I'm just ultimately experimenting and like this is like we have it to where Tara I think is seemingly at points better. But then when looking at it, eh, not quite, uh, because we have to where she like consistently, I think she shifts into other personas even much more so than I think before. Uh, so we end up having it to where Tara could be uh, Alice at one point, then eventually she turns into animal alter and uh, goes and uh, breaks things and, and runs through places and... Maybe pees a little. I don't know. 
Because uh, <laughs> ultimately, that's that's the silly thing uh, about this show, is we have to have uh, Tara being a, a comedic thing. Uh, so, reasonably. So, Max ends up, uh, at the end of the day, uh, after this wedding... Um, Max is kind of cementing that they should get married again, and ultimately maybe that'll be a thing that they end up doing, I hope. Just have them just remarry again, um, because ultimately that'll just be a nice gesture and whatever, it'll just be, like, renewing their vows, but whatever. When looking at it, it'll just be, like, re-cementing that they're gonna be forever together or whatever, because I'm assuming at some point they're almost close to getting divorced, so why not just get remarried? Um... But anyways, so we end up having it to where now we have to go into the Terra journey. So in this portion of story, Terra is kind of mo the most irrelevant character with the exclusion of one little thing. So we ultimately have it to where Terra through here is ultimately to mostly be uh just normal Terra or uh, ultimately just kind of be whatever she needs for the story uh cuz she's the most kind of a relevant character to be brutally honest so we have a tour Terra is to eventually switch uh between uh between ultimately being Terra and then ultimately uh when we have uh Marshall, who is uh, getting his liar box, and then ultimately... Um... Alright. <laughs> you kind of love it when you ultimately are just doing a thing, and then ultimately just... And then it stops. That's always great. Uh, so, recently I just had to kind of, like, back to where I was. I watched the... Uh, luckily I had the other video back where I can see where I was. So ultimately now I'm going to like kind of start where I left off and kind of move into uh, finishing up this review. So we have it to where, uh, to where Marshall's getting his uh, liar box. And so we have it to where Tara is kind of uh, changing through her personas because we end up having it to where Marshall is throwing some shade all over the family, being honest uh, for the first time, and I don't know how long, about everything, about the family and how Tara is so hard to deal with. And so ultimately we have it to where Tara ends up switching seemingly from, I believe, to be uh, Tara, and then maybe Alice, and then maybe uh, go into the animal alter that ultimately goes and starts breaking things and otherwise is just to be shoved into some uh, into some room eventually when we have it to where max is to have his uh to have his kind of uh home being consulted upon to have it be that his kids are living in a well, uh, well put together home and stuff like that. They uh, like child services and stuff like that. So we end up having it to where eventually the big thing that Tara is going to need to do for this season to is to figure out her past. Ultimately, she had done some painting of some person that she didn't really know. And ultimately, we have it to where the uh, the Linda, I believe, character, because I don't have IMDb up right now, uh, the character that ultimately has a seemingly, uh, like, I saw, like, she had, like, car parts for jewelry, and that just immediately just, like, like, does she seriously have, like, uh, car parts for jewelry or just bizarre parts for jewelry? It's weird. Anyways... So we end up having it to where Tara ends up going and going into being an artist. It seems that uh, we find out she had been a painter. She goes back into painting. And then eventually she ends up taking the liar box that ultimately Marshall had. And ultimately she makes it into some house 
that ultimately has some bizarreish maze that is inside of it that is done by some uh, motorized toy of sorts and this and that, whatever, what have you. So we end up having it going into the fact that Terra needs to go in and ultimately need to have a mystery to be solved. We ultimately have it to where when... Max confesses that ultimately he had cheated on Terra. We have it to where Terra turns into Buck and beats the living crap out of Max. And ultimately Terra wakes up the next day to ultimately just go, Oh, well, hey, you got beaten up. Isn't that too bad? Well, sucks to be you. I'm going to leave because ultimately I have a mystery to solve. We ultimately have it to where Terra has to find out who that man was. That ultimately she had painted. And so we have it to where Tara is going on a fact-finding mission to find out that ultimately Tara was adopted. Tara and Charmaine were adopted by her by, by her parents. We ultimately have it to where supposedly, and here's the kicker. So we end up having seemingly Tara's father losing his effing mind and but they're not their biological parents so <laughs> we end up finding out that Tara and Charmaine seemingly were adopted and both of them were taken from some halfway house evidently both of these kids were from abusive homes I guess and so hence why both I guess Charmaine and Tara had the issues that they have because they were from a abused house. But it seems that neither one of them had realized that they had been adopted. Did they both just kind of forget about all that? Did they ultimately just not realize neither one of them? Like, ultimately, I guess we aren't going to really peel back the layers of... Or, like... Basically, it was never really known that either one of them were adopted or anything. Like, nothing was really brought up. Like, even if Charmaine was their biological kid and Tara wasn't, how was it that they never had ultimately said any lick of anything about being, uh, like, really just being, like, adopted for anything anywhere? Like, how is it that neither one of, like, how is it that when they would go to the hospital how is it <laughs> none of this came up nothing came up uh parental history i guess they just ultimately just like well i guess these are actually my biological parents so here's their history on them which ultimately would probably not make any sense to any doctor or whatever i don't know anyways um so going into this show so We have it to where Tara ends up going in and trying to find her halfway house parents because she wouldn't have found her biological parents, I guess, because ultimately, like, she was just taken from a halfway house. So we have to f fiddle the riddle of basically figuring out who Tara and maybe Charmaine's uh, biological parents are, whoever they are. And so while ultimately we have it to where Charmaine had no clue that she was adopted. Evidently, they had been in this halfway thing for I don't know how long, but I guess both Charmaine and uh, and Tara had completely blocked this whole part of their childhood out, I guess. Sure. Uh, whatever this story needs to be, just all of a sudden we just bring it to the forefront that everybody just doesn't have any memories of seemingly anything in this show and so that's ultimately what has to happen for season two i guess so i don't know everybody just has amnesia very selective amnesia for every little lick of anything in this show um we ultimately have tara's father that ultimately has amnesia that he was crazy and so i guess that's a thing <laughs> moving on so ultimately we have a tour Tara goes to her uh, weirdly adopted mom uh, or person that was that was having her with this halfway house and we find out that 
quite possibly that uh, that Tara had gotten the Alice persona from this Leave It to Beaver adopted mother. We ultimately have it to where it seems like they are having a conversation and we eventually have it to where Max ends up driving to this halfway house and ultimately noticing that this mother looks just like Alice. It's like, hey, that must be where uh, Tara gets Alice from because we have to have like a uh, like a uh, kind of a patient zero of, of how uh, at some points that Tara had gotten her disorders because bizarrely i guess not one of these disorders have to be just something that tara tara had just come up with no she had just saw somebody be like this and so now she has to be them bizarrely so like she has to take pieces of every single person that she has ever been with in her life and i guess that is kind of one the thing of disorder like like when i'm looking at this i would assume that it's like a like i would i would have assessed that it would have been much more like split that none of these things have to have its uh its own origin they just have to be part of this character and that's who they are um like i thought it like when looking at it when watching the split movie how like there's some alters or some personalities that could ultimately lift like like hugely heavily items that wouldn't make any sense for any other altar to be able to lift that heavy of an item and so on and so forth. There's some altars that evidently have um, diabetes or whatever. And so when looking at this case and seeing this and having it to where, oh, well, every altar just came from a person Troll to me, I'm like, that kind of feels like, I'm like, okay, so it kind of feels like Tara is almost acting like she's, like she has it, and that is the, like, everything has to have an origin, everything has to be, like, like, there has to be a person represented to have started this disorder, it can't be that... Uh, like some something just triggered some bizarre personality. It has to be a legitimate person that ultimately Tara seemingly had to copy to be. And yeah, I'm j I'm a little baffled about that. I'm like, like okay, like this couldn't have just been spurned or churned from just something from any number. There has to be a visual representation of something that Tara had to copy. Okay, so. We end up having Tara go to this place and we end up finding out that seemingly the, the man of that home ultimately has some um, horrific tie to Tara. Where I think at some point, I think that Tara had switched to T, I think. And like all of a sudden talked about uh, that there was some horrific past between this guy and T, I believe. And then eventually we have it to where T ends up switching to this new persona or this new altar called Chicken. Where ultimately we have it to where Charmaine ultimately is connecting with this altar because evidently when uh, like Charmaine was young, she used to call Tara Chicken bizarrely. And I'm like, wait. How is it that Tara remembers this persona but doesn't remember this time period? That all, I don't know. Like, to me, I was like, I am so confused about all of this. Um, there's a lot of confusion going on about, like, the timeline of everything. Was Tara just always known as Chicken during that during any time period, even after they had been gone from this home. I don't know, but we just have Tara, who is now a little kid, and ultimately, uh, we have it to where, like, to where I'm just so, like, utterly in confusion, but I'm, I'm just going along with this. So... We end up having it to where Max is ultimately putting Chicken uh, into uh, 
really very much into this uh, into this car, and ultimately they're driving off. Well, Max is driving off on his motorcycle. Charmaine is ultimately going off in her car. And I'm like, okay, so why is it that all of a sudden we have one specific moment that trigger re-triggers this altar and then now we have this altar be overwhelmingly like used like i'm just like you know what like this disorder is like being very convenient to the story like it's like whatever the story needs the altars deliver kind of thing and like i don't feel like that's right like i think that ultimately like like, if it were a wedding, then all of a sudden you would just bizarrely just get Buck, or you would just bizarrely just get Alice, or you would just bizarrely get, uh, like, it kind of feels like the, this disorder doesn't feel random, it feels that ultimately, like, we're playing too much into one persona, and because it's the new persona, it's like, if we if if we had it to where and and i don't know if this is like just the like well you just need something to trigger this disorder or whatever is to go on like like there is triggers for certain things that i'm sure ultimately if you have it to where there is certain personas that might be triggered by seeing a picture of something or by a uh, any number of things I'm sure will trigger a, a persona to just come out of nowhere. And then uh, other people just have to forcibly deal with it. Uh, like I'm kind of waiting for there to be more of a mixed bag of personas than reasonably it being like, Oh, this was Tara in 1995. And Oh, this was Tara uh, being a painter. And Oh, this is, uh, this is, uh, Alice, who is a baker and whatever, like, it just kind of feels that everything is otherwise tied to everything of Tara's past, and there's not, like, an old man persona that all, all of a sudden Tara is doing uh, that has to do with nothing. It's ultimately maybe just dealing with all these other personas is ultimately just burning another persona. I don't know. Um... Like, you would have thought when Tara was, like, really breaking down, ultimately mentioning that, like, like, I thought it was better. Like, I thought that that would have made her, like, go all kinds of, like, and have a, have us have all kinds of different personas. But ultimately, like, no. Like, we're just having it to where uh, when Tara becomes angry, then Tara becomes whatever persona, probably Buck or whatever. Anyways, uh, I'm getting way too much into this, and then ultimately I'm kind of, like, I, I want to get get this done. Um, so I'm kind of in I'm kind of into depthly going through things. So we end up having it to where uh, to where wedding time, and so ultimately we have Tara, who is still chicken, ultimately being a child, and everyone is just trying to deal with her. Ultimately, uh, at some point she is going and eating a dinner, and she realizes that she is. Uh, chicken is turning into Tara and she realizes, oh my god, I'm wearing some crown? What is going on? I'm eating a kid's meal and blah 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 blah. So we end up having Charmaine tell her that she's chicken and so and then reasonably when they had the wedding Charmaine goes right back to being chicken. I'm like when you get a mixture of personas, why is it that this like this chicken thing is the only thing that's going like on right now. Like it kind of feels like, like I was assuming that these personas would be like not a, like the personas would not make sense to the story where you'd have it to where like, where Alice is a persona that consistently goes for a while within the show, which makes no sense to me. You have it to where Buck uh, is a persona that goes for a while, which again makes no sense to me. 
uh, with seemingly every heavily amount of personas that uh, really Terra has, you would think that, like, you would be getting all kinds of, like, okay, who is this person today? Like, why am I dealing with this one? What's going on? Where? <laughs> this person's going back to their house. I don't know when they're, like... You ha you would think that like with the movie like split which which this character is almost like you have it to where in that movie where James McAvoy's character is consistently every single persona is like fighting for the light. Uh, but ultimately we have some tier personas that consistently are out and about much more often. Um, and eventually we had the one character uh, that was the kid persona that ultimately was uh, was talking about his socks or whatever. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the movie Split. But ultimately, like, I think that a lot of people were, were looking at this movie and, or looking at, I mean, this show and were kind of taking things from, like, movies like Split or just kind of a lot of other, like, disorder things that they've seen like this, and then they just kind of fused it into here. And so, reasonably, I don't think that a lot of this stuff was really well thought out, or there was really much of a real and true, like, effort into, like, diving in deep for the whole therapy part, because it's obvious that uh, people, nobody knew what they are doing for that aspect. It kind of feels like they're they didn't know how to write the treatment parts. It didn't feel like they knew how to like give Tara any answers. And it feels like now they're trying to write out the whole therapy part whatsoever and just have Tara have some mystery to solve uh, with the whole adopted thing. And so we end up having it to where Tara's at the wedding, and she is now the kid persona yet again, and we end up having Nick having to deal with Tara as this chicken persona, and he's like, oh my god, it's like, this girl is so, like, difficult to deal with with just this persona, and maybe Nick is seeing that Tara is hard to deal with, and he is imagining that he has a kid to deal with within X amount of months. So hence why he's getting cold feet and ultimately wanting to run out of the wedding. So like this whole chicken persona was to be written in to be perfectly worked out during this time to give Nick the cold feet he needed to have him otherwise decide to jump out of this uh, wedding before it was to get started. And so ultimately we have it to our Tara. Uh, reasonably, that's kind of like the real tail end of what she really actually does throughout this season. And that's about it. Really, most of it is just her dealing with uh, her dealing with the adoption thing, her dealing with her father that bizarrely is so odd and off putting in the in the in the wedding because ultimately we have it to where Tara is talking about her, talking to her father and her father is very like like is he drunk a lot of the stuff isn't making any sense uh we ultimately have it to where uh Tara's father is talking about a brother that she quite possibly has but there's a lot of stuff that is very unsure about all that because her father is bad crap crazy i think at this point or ultimately just like i don't know is he drunk i don't know like i don't know what he's like because it's it seems kind of weird that ultimately in the beginning we have it to where tara's parents were ultimately going to take the kids but we easily and quickly find out that Tara's parents aren't fit to take Kate and uh, take Kate and uh, Marshall within this wedding time. And I'm like, 
So I'm like, wait a minute. So we would have ultimately had it to where, like, yeah, take the kids. But the dad's crazy, so don't take the kids. Like, I get, I don't know. Like, reasonably, I just didn't quite understand the father part. And that just burned a hole into my skull of just going like, okay, I don't understand. That is the crappy writing that goes on with the show. Where it's like, all of a sudden, it's just like... Okay, a character that you saw before, like, we didn't know what to do with him. Uh, now I think that we know what to do with him, but he's going to look so way different than he was the first time around that you saw him that ultimately you're probably going to be put off by that. I think kind of uh, Patton Oswald's character, Neil, ultimately was that same kind of thing where... In the in the early parts of this show, they didn't know what to really do with Neil. And so when they finally do know what to do with Neil, it's off-putting because what they are doing uh, isn't something that I want for his character to do. As well as reasonably Tara's father and, like, kind of any number of people. We have a tour eventually, like... Tara's mom ends up going and seeking out uh, Charmaine because Charmaine desperately calls her in desperation to get her to come there. And then eventually we have it to where Tara's mom it just is just to go there to have Tara as Alice um, kind of get in her face about things and ultimately to, to have it to where Alice is lashing out at Tara's mother and we have it to where Tara's mother just eventually just just leaves. So I'm like, what was the point of having this mother here just to have this lash out so that way Tara can be a different persona towards her mother? But also, I guess, to just open up about the fact that adopted parents and not really being your real mother and so on and so forth. So... But anyways, yeah, so reasonably, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that ultimately was just kind of unpacked, but none of it was really dealing with Tara for the second half of this season. It just kind of felt like Tara was a very elusive character that ultimately, like, a lot of her stuff didn't matter because when really looking at it, the only thing that mattered was Max having a fair, which ultimately, like, didn't really do deal much with her because ultimately... Uh, she became Buck and beat the crap out of Max, and, like, a lot of it wasn't really dealing with Tara. A lot of it was dealing with everybody else. There was so much time eaten up by everybody going on their journeys rather than Tara having her own, with the exclusion of the, uh, the adopted family thing, which ultimately didn't really resolve anything. It just kind of left more holes, and now we're eventually going to probably take the rest of season we're probably going to take season three to unlock more mysteries of Terra and then have this hunting for mysteries and clues and so on and so forth so with that I am going to get out of here uh so ultimately uh, like there's probably a lot of stuff that I ultimately did not go through and kind of pick through and whatever but at the end of the day I think that's all I wanted to say about this second season we're going to go into the third hopefully uh, all depending on the viewership and everything like that that kind of goes into these videos. Uh, but when also looking at it, it was just kind of intriguing to uh, kind of talk to uh, talk to people about uh, certain shows or whatever. Because uh, ultimately, there's a lot of times when reasonably when going into these, it's just kind of like uh, maybe there's something that I missed, or maybe there's something that uh, when really looking at it that. Uh, is inaccurate or some things that I was just like I'm like like I am just so and utterly like there's there's some parts about this show that I think in the first season I really liked but in this season I'm just like nah like like I really liked the first season but this season breakdown is ultimately just like man it's there's a lot of convenience here there's a lot of, uh, like, crappy writing that is going on in this season because ultimately they couldn't figure out what to do with somebody in the first. So, 
hopefully a lot of this stuff will actually be resolved or a lot of this stuff will as far as writing goes will be better um because man this is such clunky writing uh for a lot of this stuff and how we have to continue to clunk our way through these uh, through these seasons, through these episodes, to just, like, forcefully have something for somebody to do kind of just feels like, ugh, it's, that kind of sucks. So I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.